My name is Stefan Jones and I am a sea track guide here in Wales. I've got the beautiful River Tyvee, the Queen of Welsh Rivers in the background here and this is the river I tend to fish and guide on personally nowadays and have done for, well, I've fished it for over 30 years but guided on it for some 26 years now. So certainly got a few years few years under my belt and it is showing unfortunately but there you go. So in this video what I was going to do is uh, if you click on the video above there is a video up there about the complete setup what I tend to carry what I am out sea trout fishing but in this video I'm actually going to specifically cover the flies and the flies that I carry and the flies for different stages because this is worthy of a, of a video alone. So I tend to carry three boxes and these are essentially have three very different use cases hence why they are split up into three categories essentially i have one box which is this one and this is my daytime box and also my early evening box you can see more than happy to show everything in the box there's no kind of no secrets when it uh when it comes to me and uh, and, and the flies that i utilize but so this is a box i would utilize in daytime so if you're talking about fishing in a falling flood this is very much my go-to box for daytime fishing probably wouldn't carry anything else other than this box especially if i am swinging flies as opposed to nymphing or whatever but that's a whole different yeah whole different approach and uh, uh, something for, for for another video the flies in this pot uh, box as a rule are up to and essentially under one inches long so everything in this box I would say is from around half an inch. There's usually three stages, half an inch, and we're talking about the overall dressings of the flies, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and then up to that one inch marker. That's the size that I am fishing in the daytime and then into, into the evening before I'm properly fishing what I would classify as at night. And what I'm talking about at night is when you've lost all color from the trees. Those that do have my book, I've actually worked out a system where you can work out what the official local sunset time is and then calculate what time you, know, you should officially be counting darkness as when you're going night fishing. But yeah, you know, when you lose the foliage from, sorry, the color from the foliage and stuff, and that's usually what I would refer to as, as, as the proper night fishing. Up until then, and again in falling floods, this is the box I would carry. So again, these flies are up to one inches long. And that's a general, just a really useful general rule of thumb. When people say big or small, that's my marker. When I talk about small flies, it's usually under an inch long. If I talk about big flies, it's one inch and above. And that usually holds you again in good stead with you know before darkness and after darkness in this box i could probably break this down to three flies it's 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 then more about how you fish them rather than the flies i like a light fly and i like a dark fly in the daytime the when you have a lot more residual light which is obvious it's daytime color has a lot more significance and as a as a rule i do trust more or, or hold more trust in trigger points so fluorescent points little trigger points pearl yeah flash whatever whatever you want red all, all the myriad of colors has a significance in the daytime where i do not believe that it has the same significance at night versus black and white essentially or silhouettes so in the daytime yes i do like trigger points and i do like uh, to fish a light fly and a dark fly i usually fish the light fly on the dropper i usually fish a dark fly on the point nothing more complicated than that my two go-to flies in that circumstance would be a hothead silver stoat on the point and there's a video for that up above on the dropper I really love the pearly Peter Ross and there's a video for that up above. So those would usually be my go-to and essentially then it's more about the speed that you're fishing them and the size of, of those flies. The third fly I wouldn't be without is a Sunray Shadow and that would be in a double format and also in a bigger that's the the difference i guess when we're talking about the up to one inches long when i'm fishing sun rays that's a, a rule breaker there where i will fish them actually in a falling flood i'll fish them absolutely massive i'll fish them eight, eight inches long which people kind of go wow eight inches long 
But if you look, you know, if you've done any spin fishing in your life, and you look at the size of some of the spinners, they will take like a, a flying sea, some of the really big husky jerks that the sea trout will take, even a small sea trout will take. Eight inch uh, sunray is absolutely nothing to these fish and they will intercept them very, very easily. It's having the confidence to fish them in the first place. But yeah, so a sunrays, uh, the sunrays, just because I usually fish them a lot quicker as well, the sunrays is uh, yeah they, they are as a rule are, are bigger flies but beyond that yeah hotels uh, and there's videos for the sun ray up above there's one for the double format uh, and then straight after there's one for the tube fly format beyond that then so that is my go-to on, on the small fly front my next pro, 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 uh, progression then after that stage, essentially when we're going into the first stages of night fishing, that first run through the pool. So then it's one inch and above. And at night, I do not fish under one inches long. I'm talking about the overall dressing. And that gives you a really good indication of, sm again, small or big. So it's always a one inch or above. After that, I do believe that it's more about the speed of the fly. So if you're not getting a reaction, I do not believe then that you're fishing too big. I actually believe then it's more to, down to the speed that you're fishing the flies. So this is just kind of a, a first run through. But again, if, you, if your light levels, the size of the fly will be determined by the light levels at night. If the light levels don't change, you essentially may not have to change from your one inch marker throughout the night. Indeed, you know, th there was the old rule of half time half time to, to me is complete nonsense because you can actually have a night become lighter as the night progresses because if a moon comes up a moon comes behind the clouds or whatever you may have more residual light as the night goes on in which case you probably need to go smaller not bigger so the the old rule of you know the half time go deep big all this kind of stuff is not to me personally it's absolute nonsense you should always rely on what nature and the environment is telling you and again just watch what the residual light is doing and change and adapt the size of your fly to the amount of residual light left so this is that one inch marker and in here again night night fishing for me is more about silhouettes than color so color for me at night doesn't hold much significance at all. It's more about black and white. So my Dioni, for example, which is, has a white hackle through the body, you know, that, to be honest, it produces fish whenever, but you may think, okay, that has a softer silhouette, so it may work better under uh, kind of, if it is, if there is more residual light. But anyway, as a rule, it's more about silhouettes, size and silhouettes. So, and always think about, in terms of the different silhouettes, think about a fat silhouette and think about a, a streamlined silhouette. If you think about these fish feeding in salt water, if you think about what a pin fry or a small sand deal would be, it'd be a very, very thin profile, very thin silhouette. If you then think about a fil uh, silhouette of a shrimp, well, that would be a very fat, juicy silhouette. So if you're talking about the flies then, if you're talking about my Dioni, there's a video up above for that one, if you want to have a look at that one, or then something like a Mr. Fish, there's a video up above for that one. If you think about those two flies, those actually throw two totally different silhouettes. And by fishing two flies at the same time, which I do nine times out of 10, unless I'm fishing a surface lure, then it's a solo fly. But otherwise I'm fishing two flies. One will be a pretty st streamlined silhouette and the other one will be a fat juicy silhouette. So muddlers, there's a video up above, somebody if you want to create just a simple muddler, which is a great dropper fly, but actually you can fish it solo as a little uh, mini surface lure as well. But yeah, think about size and silhouette at night rather than color. And those are the two things that will hold you in better stead than experimenting too much with, with color. So that's my next stage or next step, if you like. Again, you, I may not have to move off that box at all at night. If I do, I'm usually leaving the dropper in place. And what that does is then I usually have one small fly, which again has a very different profile of silhouette uh, fishing anyway. I tend to then change the size of the point fly. And the point fly would still usually remain a very streamlined thin silhouette, but I'd usually go a lot bigger. And I usually then move on to these, they're the old kind of Waddington style, but actually with a single hook on the back end. I don't fish, actually I rarely even fish doubles anymore, unless I'm fishing the small flies uh, at the beginning of the night. At night itself, 
actually I don't fish unless I'm fishing a tube which is quite rare nowadays everything I'm fishing is singles people thinking that you need to fish trebles even as stingers honestly do not read into that it's a very psychological thing that you think I have more hook points I'm more likely to land the fish a single hook when that hook goes in I, I lose so few fish nowadays especially since making the transition onto just singles and especially when I'm fishing these tandem or stinger setups with a shrink tubing without uh, protruding or trailing single video for them up above if I'm fishing them honestly I lose so so few fish but that would usually be the way then I'd usually drop onto one of these at night on the point and then keep that fat juicy silhouette on the dropper again showing them two totally different things if they don't take the point they may take the dropper if they don't take the dropper they may take the point if you find one thing is working in particular, if you find you're still taking all of the fish on the small flight, if you're finding they're taking all of the fish now on the big flies, adjust. You know, you have two flies. You can work around those and adjust things to what you're finding is working. And then, obviously, then I have some surface lures, which are a must. I have a, a big surface lure, I have a, a small surface lure. And again, I can also fish the muddlers as surface lure as well. So that's a third size, essentially, of surface lures. Definitely wouldn't be uh, without the surface lures. And that, that would fish solo. Uh, that's usually on a very short leader, five five to six foot leader and nothing nothing more complicated than that but those are essentially the three boxes I carry at night and I don't need to carry anything more than that that's just a tried and tested system uh, rather than carrying you know a big bag full of stuff whilst there are three boxes you can see they're streamlined boxes just fit nicely in my waist pack and you know that with a spool of nylon essentially I'm, I'm good to go so I hope that helps you with your setup I hope it helps you think and consider what you're carrying and why and when also to utilize the different flies in your box and the next time you're on the river i hope it uh, helps you produce a few fish tight lines